today we will learn something new and interesting. Let us begin by reading what is on the screen. The girl who is wearing the red dress is an astronaut. Now this is a group of words which makes complete sense. Hence this group of words which makes complete sense is a sentence. Now let us see this sentence in parts. Let us take this part of the sentence. The girl is an astronaut. So we have the girl is an astronaut. So this is a group of words. It is a part of the main sentence. So this group of words has a subject, the girl and a verb is and it makes complete sense. So if I say the girl is an astronaut, it is making complete sense. It is conveying a complete thought and we see that it can stand alone as a sentence. So this group of words which has a subject and a verb makes complete sense and can stand alone as a sentence is known as a clause. So the sentence, the girl who is wearing the red dress is an astronaut has a clause which is the girl is an astronaut. So now let us look at the remaining part of the sentence. What is the remaining part of the sentence? Who is wearing the red dress? So when we take who is wearing the red dress, we see that this part is also a group of words. So this group of words has a subject who and a verb is wearing now this part of the sentence which is a group of words which has a subject and a verb does not convey complete sense. It only conveys some sense. If I just say who is wearing the red dress, I am not being very clear as to what I want to say. So this group of words cannot stand alone as a complete sentence. So this group of words which has a subject and a verb which conveys some sense but not complete sense and cannot stand alone as a sentence is also known as a clause. Now if you read this sentence carefully you will realize that the clause who is wearing the red dress is behaving as an adjective because it is describing the girl so we see that the sentence, the girl who is wearing the red dress is an astronaut, is made up of two parts. The first part, the girl is an astronaut, is a clause which can stand alone as a sentence. It is making complete sense. Whereas the other part, who is wearing the red dress, is also a clause. But this clause cannot stand alone as a sentence because it is not conveying a complete thought and is not giving a complete sense. So what is a clause? A clause is a group of words that has a subject and a verb. It may or may not stand alone to form a complete sentence. If it conveys a complete thought, only then can it stand alone as a sentence. If it does not convey a complete thought, in that case, it cannot stand alone as a sentence. So our original sentence was, the girl who is wearing the red dress is an astronaut. Now we can also rewrite this sentence as, the girl Wearing the red dress is an astronaut. Both the sentences are conveying the same meaning. So let us look at the second sentence. Our second sentence is, the girl wearing the red dress is an astronaut. Now in this sentence also, we can take out this part, the girl is an astronaut. And we have seen earlier that the girl is an astronaut is a clause because it has a subject and a verb and is conveying complete sense. 
So let us look at the remaining part of the sentence. What is the remaining part of the sentence? Wearing the red dress. So when we look at the remaining part of the sentence, wearing the red dress, we realize that this remaining part is also a group of words. But this group of words does not have a subject doing a verb. Can you identify any subject in this part of the sentence? No, we cannot find any subject here. We also realize that it does not make complete sense. If I just say wearing the red dress, I am not making any sense. So this part or this group of words cannot stand alone as a sentence. So this group of words is known as a phrase. And this phrase, if you read the sentence carefully, you will realize that acts as an adjective because it is describing the girl. So our sentence, the girl wearing the red dress is an astronaut, can be divided in two parts. The part, the girl is an astronaut, is a clause which can stand alone as a complete sentence. It has a verb and a subject. Whereas the other part of the sentence, wearing the red dress, does not have a subject doing a verb. It is not conveying complete sense. Hence, this part is a phrase. So this sentence is made up of a clause and a phrase. So what is a phrase? A phrase is a group of words that acts as a part of speech. That is, it acts as a noun, an adjective or an adverb. It may have a noun or a verb but it does not have a subject doing a verb. It conveys some sense, but cannot stand alone to form a complete sentence or to convey a complete thought. It always depends on other groups of words to make complete sense. Now let us look at this sentence. The dog eating a biscuit has soft brown fur. Now let us look at this sentence also in two parts. Now we realize that the part the dog has soft brown fur is a clause because it has a subject, the dog. It has a verb, has. It is conveying complete sense, the dog has soft brown fur. It can also stand alone as a sentence. But the remaining part of the sentence, eating a biscuit, what is it? We see that this part, eating a biscuit, does not have a subject doing a verb. It is not giving us complete sense. It is only conveying some sense. Hence, this part, eating a biscuit, is a phrase. And this phrase, acts as an adjective. Why? Because it is describing the dog. Now since in a phrase there is no subject doing a verb, can we take any group of words and call it a phrase? Let us see. Now we have taken this part eating a aside. Now can we say eating a is a group of words? Yes, it is a group of words. Can we say eating a is a phrase? Now do you think this group of words, eating a, is behaving like an adjective or an adverb or a noun? If you read the sentence carefully, you will realize that this group of words does not behave like an adjective, does not behave like an adverb, and neither does it behave like a noun. So what do we realize? We realize that a group of words to be identified as a phrase has to behave like a unit which acts as a part of speech. So just by taking eating a 
as a group of words, we cannot call this a phrase. But if we take the entire part, eating a biscuit, this entire group of words is acting as a unit and this unit acts as an adjective by describing the dog. So whenever you have to identify a phrase, remember to take a group of words which acts as a unit and then acts as a part of speech. So the sentence, the dog eating a biscuit has soft brown fur is made up of a clause, the dog has soft brown fur and a phrase eating a biscuit and this phrase is acting as an adjective in this sentence. Now let us read this sentence. The frog jumped into the pond. Now this entire group of words is a clause. It has a subject, the frog. It has a verb, jumped and is making complete sense. So this sentence is made up of one clause. But if you read this sentence carefully, you will realize that the entire clause can be broken up into another clause as well as a phrase. Let us understand. Now, if we break the clause, the frog jumped into the pond, we will realize that the frog jumped makes complete sense. This can also stand alone as a sentence. This part has a subject, the frog, and a verb, jumped. So this part is a clause. The remaining part, into the pond, is a phrase because it has no subject doing a verb and is giving only partial sense. It is not conveying a complete thought. So this part, into the pond here, is acting as an adverb because it is telling us where the frog jumped. So this part into the pond is a phrase. So what do we see? We see that a clause can be further broken down either into another clause or into several phrases. Now let us look at this sentence. Reeti was reading a book and her dog was playing beside her. So this sentence can be further broken down into Riti was reading a book, her dog was playing beside her. So the first part, Riti was reading a book, is a group of words. It has a subject, Riti, a verb, was reading, and is conveying complete sense. So this part is a clause, and this clause can stand alone as a sentence. Now let us look at the other part of the sentence. Her dog was playing beside her. Now this part is a group of words which has a subject, her dog, a verb, was playing and makes complete sense. This also can stand alone as a complete sentence. Her dog was playing beside her. So this part is also a clause. Now, if you read this part carefully, you will realize that this clause can be further broken down as her dog was playing. So, this part is also making complete sense. So, this clause can be further broken down as another clause, her dog was playing and the remaining part beside her has no subject doing a verb, is conveying only some sense, not complete sense. And this group of words is acting as an adverb. It is telling us where the dog was playing. So this part is a phrase. So we see that the second clause, her dog was playing beside her, can be further broken down into a clause, her dog was playing, and a phrase beside her. Now let us do this exercise. Identify if the underlined group of words is a phrase or a clause. I went for a movie after returning from school. The part underlined for us is after returning from school. So let us look at this part of the sentence. 
after returning from school. In this part of the sentence, can you identify any subject doing a verb? No, there is no subject doing a verb. Is this part giving us complete sense or some sense? This part is conveying only some sense to us. And we see that this part or this group of words is acting as an adverb. It is telling us about the time. Hence, this part after returning from school is a phrase. So today we have learnt about phrases and clauses. We have learnt that a phrase as well as a clause is a group of words. So what is the difference between a phrase and a clause? A phrase does not convey complete thought and so it cannot stand alone to form a complete sentence. It may have a subject or a verb, but not a subject doing a verb. It acts as a part of speech, so it can act as a noun, an adjective or an adverb. Whereas a clause may or may not stand alone to form a complete sentence. When it conveys a complete thought, only then can a clause stand alone as a complete sentence. It has a subject doing a verb and it may or may not act as a part of speech. Only when it does not stand as a complete sentence and does not convey a complete thought, does it act as a part of speech. And then it can act as a noun as an adjective or as an adverb. So today we have learnt about phrases and clauses and if you still find them confusing, then all that you have to do is practice. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to get all learning resources as per ICSC, CBSC, IB, Cambridge or any other curriculum. Over 5,000 amazing lectures across maths, science, English and social science. Our unique interactive video technology keeps you engaged and our iDictionary feature allows you to quickly revise any concept. Master each topic at your own pace with our adaptive practice technology and 1 million plus questions. Get instant answers and detailed solutions. Be exam ready by taking unlimited mock tests, performance analysis with actionable feedback, personal tutors to resolve your slightest of doubts. That's not all. You can also win amazing prizes like PlayStation, iPad, watches and many more along with certificates through our Earn As You Learn program. So learning at Delta Step is not just fun and easy, it is also rewarding. So register for free now.